Today we're going to see a demonstration of how to easily fabricate a posterior elbow splint. This type of splint can be challenging due to its size and the length of the material. This video shows some great techniques for making an accurately sized pattern to avoid material waste and proper positioning of your patient to maximize control of the material during molding. To make the pattern, measurements are taken circumferentially around the humerus and the forearm. Using a tape measure, note one half the circumference of the proximal humerus and write this number down for later use. Next, measure similarly at the elbow crease, then midway between the elbow and the wrist, and lastly at the wrist crease. One additional measurement from the midpoint of the proximal humerus along the posterior elbow and down to the wrist crease will be used to determine the length of your splint. Start with a large rectangular piece of splinting material. Draw a line from top to bottom the length of your posterior elbow measurement. This is for the length of your splint. To determine the width, use your circumferential measurements, drawing a line at the top of the material that is the length of your proximal humerus measurement. Try to center the line with the width of the splinting material. Move down, draw lines using your distal measurements to create an inverted pyramid shape. Connecting the ends of the lines, you should be left with a tapered pattern that should fit your patient properly when cut out. After cutting out your pattern, position your patient in supine with elbow flexion and shoulder internal rotation. Pillows can be used to support heavier painful limbs. This position eliminates the pull of gravity, enabling easier molding. Be sure to pad the medial and lateral epicondyles as these can be points of high pressure while wearing the splint. Drape the warmed material over the posterior elbow using smooth strokes beginning with the proximal moving towards the distal end. When forming the 90 degree flexed elbow position, you should dog ear the material at the joint and smooth the edges distally. Once hardened, remove the splint and repurpose the pads, transferring them to the inside of the splint at the medial and lateral epicondyles. Replace the splint and measure where your straps will go. You'll need two straps proximally and two straps distally for op optimal security. I hope you found this video helpful. Please tune in for additional splinting videos to come.